Let's talk about TMB. Sure. So, come come to the university, but no, be the be the be the, uh, be the general manager, manager at, yeah. at uh, the Vibro Theater. But by the way, if you're bored, start a theater. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. But see, I had a fabulous board. It was a small board. It was this the, is at the Beaver Book Center. Beaver Book uh, Theater. You know, the so just, yeah. just describe the Beaver Book Playhouse as it were. It was then, it was, uh, it was this Georgian 1,100-seat auditorium. It wasn't really a theater. It didn't have, a, it didn't have workshops. It didn't have a gallery, fly gallery, any of that. But it was a beautiful concert hall. And who That's built it? Why did, was it built? Beaverbrook built it. It was opened in 1964, and he gave it as a gift to the province of New Brunswick, his home province, built by money from him and from his second wife, uh, Lady Dunn Beaverbrook. And uh, yeah, uh, didn't give any money for operating it, but the Canadian Beaverbrook Foundation did cover some of the operating costs. Right. Okay, and Beaverbrook uh, did manage to get the city not to take any uh, municipal taxes. Well, that over the years amounted to a fair amount of money. So there it was. Uh, the first uh, manager was an ex-army man named Alexander Gray, and he and his wife, who was a designer, established a local community company called the Company of Ten, and did some plays. But then he went off in the wildlife place here in uh, Ontario. Uh, he ran that for a number of years. And the next was uh, a reporter who happened to be passing through and had had a play produced by the Mervishes named Brian Swarbrick. And Bob Tweedy, who was the minister, uh, was ran tourism in New Brunswick at that time, was the secretary of the board and said, we're looking for a, a manager, you should. And so Brian did, and he did two summers, uh, professional theater, Bruno Gerussi, uh, uh, Nicky House, a whole load of them came for the summers. And he left, so I arrive, and oh, I started every March. Uh, I came to Ontario, went to see Equity. Larry McCants was running Equity at that time, and he was very good in advising me what I might want to do. And he said, you know, if you've not run a theater company before, you might want to talk to some of the people who have. There was Leo Major, who was in Halifax, and there was Eddie Gilbert at MTC, and I forget, Malcolm, I think, was in Vancouver. Chris Newton was in Calgary. And uh, he said, also, there's a wonderful lady uh, that you should talk to, Margot Christie. And she was running the Canadian Theatre Centre, which had been established by Tom Henry and a load of them, and it was to be an informational thing for the scene in Canada. And they had an office up on Bloor Street. And I went to see Margot Christie and told her, I fell in love with her. Uh, Diane's mother, eh? Robert Christie's wife. Right. And uh, I told her what I wanted to do. I was going to do four plays and rep that summer. And she said, oh, yes. And you have auditions. We have a room here. You can do your auditions here. And I said, yeah. And uh, I need to, need to find some directors. I had phoned Ted Follows because he had gone to uh, Hart House with Alvin Shaw. My mentor. Uh, Ted was doing the television series, so he couldn't do it. And Margaret Christie said, well, there's this chap who's had a lot of experience with summer stock and that Vernon Chapman. And she said, you might want to talk to him. So I called him and uh, uh, arranged to meet him at well, Stop 33 at the top of the Old Park Plaza, mm -hmm. the bar there. So we met in the afternoon, and I told him what I wanted to do and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh, okay. And at the end of it, uh, I went to pay for the drink, and he said, no, no, no. I'll pay for my drinks until I'm working for you. And he went away, and he phoned me the next day and said, let's get together. So we got together, and we ended up on the floor of my hotel with four colored pencils, working out how the rep would work and the actors and all the rest of it. And that was the start of the summer season. And we came in, we made $100.20 or something. Why did you choose rep rather than stock, right? One play one week, one play another week. Because I was hoping to count on tourists going through. So I'd have a different thing. I mean, like I hired kids at the border crossings who got on board the buses and told the bus driver if they were stopping in Fredericton, 
he'd get he'd get fifty cents for every person that he brought to the theater, you know, <clears throat> and that's when we were charging the dollar fifty and two dollars for a ticket, so uh, that worked out for us. So that was the reason that we went into that kind of thing. And this was on, then on a, if you were the sort of uh, the not the building manager but the production manager of the Beaverbrook, yeah. you then had to have a deal with the Beaverbrook board to say. I'm going to take it for five weeks in the summer and run it. You had to do that, or no? I was the one. You were the one. Oh, so you had the facilities. <laughs> I had the facilities. You had the theater. You said, "Well, what I'm am I?" I'm using it. <laughs> That's all. We're going to pay yourself rent. No, no. Okay, no. so you just had to have the costs of the company, of the company productions, yeah. and you had the building and facilities. We had the building, and the janitor was my production manager. You know, <laughs> that's it. Fantastic. You know, and a little girl came to uh, interview me about the plans. She was as bright as a button, and uh, she wrote a piece for the, uh, the newspaper. And my goodness, she had it all right. She got it right. And I thought, I need somebody who does that. They call it publicity, I think. So I need somebody who does that. So I took her to lunch at the Dragon City Chinese Restaurant in Fredericton and asked her if she'd come to work for me. And she said, well, that'd be interesting. How much? That's $65 a week. Oh, I'm getting $75 a week at the Gleaner. I said, well, okay, I'll give you $75 a week, but you'll have to play the monkey in the little hut. <laughs> and she had to come in every night that the little hut was on, get into the monkey costume, <laughs> get up on the thing, and swing across the stage. <laughs> there was a wonderful lady named Iris Young. Uh, <laughs> and were you an equity company? Oh, yes, right from the beginning, right from the beginning. Yeah. So where did you get your upfront money? Uh, well, at the you had to post a bond, right? Uh, we, yeah, we posted a bond. I can't remember. But the bonds were so small. I mean, what were we paying people? I can't remember if we paid them $120 or something like that, $125. You know? So, uh, goodness gracious. Uh, we did. And. We, and uh, Vern directed all four? No, no, no. Vern directed, uh, Vern directed two. Elma Shaw directed one. I, act, I directed one. Vern acted in two, I acted in two, Alvin acted in one, Milo Ringham was acting with us, Don Ewer, oh my God, uh, Donald Sutherland, not the one, the other one. Uh, and yeah. who bore the risk, the financial risk? Uh, never thought of that. <laughs> never really thought of that. Like when you stepped in the ring with Gorgeous George and got, you never know. You didn't think you of the risk. It, it never, but it's interesting, you know, I, I went away from from TMB for 18 years. When I came back, I was asked, what is the difference now than when you were here before? And the one marked difference in putting my seasons together in the 10 years that I ran TMB, the initial 10 years, I never thought about the size of the cast or the number of sets. Those were the givens. Whatever the plays were, those were the givens. That was the first thing in the budget, first thing. When I came back, of course, Size of cast becomes almost paramount. But what's the difference then, Walter? The modern board or production staff is yeah. saying, I have a cast of 10, I have these salaries, I have these. But you didn't think that way in 1968. Why? No. Because there wasn't the financial liability? Well, or I think, well, like I was saying, uh, uh, talking about my board, the premier of the province, Louis J. Robichaud, one of the biggest, most popular doctors, Bud Jewett was my chairman. DC Sorry, Canada. the premier of the province, province was on your was board? On my board, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, D.C. Campbell, who owned uh, Caterpillar Tractors and Equipment, eh? uh, Alvin Shaw from the university. I had to deal with five or six people, that's it. All very busy people. I learned a lesson that first summer uh, in September, there was something happening in Halifax, like a contact kind of thing, where uh, bookers were getting together. And I dropped a note to Dr. Jewett saying, look, uh, I'd like to go down to Halifax. I'll drive down in my car. I can stay at a friend's place. Is that all right? Didn't hear anything. Dropped another note, uh, in the, just a reminder about me going to Halifax. Nothing. I'm a couple of days before I have to go. So I finally I go to his surgery, which I know he finishes at 4.30, quarter to 5. And I sit there and I wait. When he finishes, I go in and I said, uh, uh, I didn't get any response from you. He said, no, and you won't. I said, what? He said, we hired you to run that place. I'm not running that place. You're running that place. You think it's worth going to that? You go to it. You don't ask me. Well, 
that was a lesson.